Welcome to another edition of Natural Crafts. Most of you know that I love making things directly from nature. So let's do a Thanksgiving turkey. This is all from things that you can find just on a nature walk. And I'm gonna show you how to make this really interesting centerpiece. So head on out and grab some pine cones, some grasses, some cedar, sumac flowers, and just get some clippers and a glue gun and some red felt, some foil, some leaves, and a few pebbles. I need three pieces of cardboard, one for the base, one for the back, and also I use that long rectangular piece as a backstop to make it more firm. But basically the top part is going to be a rounded shape as well as the bottom. Just make the bottom part a little bit longer. So first we're going to start with the back of the turkey, where the feathers are. And I love to use this young pompous grass. You can find it on the side of the road basically almost anywhere. And in August and September, they're still young enough that they haven't opened, so they're great to use for the back feathers. I simply glue these on to the back piece of cardboard. And when you're setting your pompous grass side by side, just start off like a taller piece at the middle and then slightly shorter pieces as you come down on the side. Now make sure you keep these grasses tight together because even though we've clipped them they start to open up a little bit. So if you put them close together they're going to look fabulous once they've opened up a little bit. So all you're going to make sure is once you've glued them don't let the stems go past the end of the cardboard. And there you have the starting of our feathers. And don't worry about how messy it looks on there. We're going to be covering that all up. Then we want to use some other grasses just to give a little contrast to the pompous grass. So I found these, again, just kind of on the side of the road and uh, grabbed a couple of clippings. And you could use almost any grasses that have that kind of a wheaty look. So it looks really good when you're just layering them on top. Now, you can use a lot of these little grasses to add contrast or just a few. So I'm just putting a few in, but of course you can add as many as you like. And of course you can get a little bit creative if you have other things lying around that you want to use as these kind of feather accents, you can use those as well. Then the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to add on some cedars. Now, and if you don't have cedars around your house, just head out for a nature walk. You can just clip off a few branches of cedar and I kind of like to dry fit them and make sure that it kind of covers everything before I start gluing it down. But again, same process, just glue it down on top of the existing um, grasses. And then as you're filling it in, you can get a little messy on the bottom, but when I start to use the, or do the top layer of cedars, I tend to want to run the glue gun on the stem. And because one side of the cedar is a little brighter green and the other side is a little bit of a darker green, as you can see, I did the brighter side and then I contrast it with flipping over the cedars and using the darker side. So again, it just adds a little bit more fullness to what's gonna be the feather plume of our turkey. And as I said before, just make sure that the stems don't come down lower than your cardboard piece because we're gonna be attaching that later. Now for the base, hopefully you've gone out for a nice nature walk and you found some wonderful pine cones. Again, if you're lucky enough to have them in your backyard, pick some big ones so we can use those as kind of filling in the center base part. So what I've done is I've put in some large pine cones on the bottom and I've left uh, about an inch and a half around the sides and the back because remember we have to attach that back. But the reason I left about an uh, inch and a half around the sides is because I want to add in some pine cones that were a little bit more feathery that I found. Uh, they were a little smaller but again I used those big pine cones to start building up the base. So here are these little feather ones that I found which were really really neat and again just go along fill in all the way around. You might want to try and make sure that the pine cones come a little bit over the edge of the cardboard. So just continue on to fill up the base and make sure you've got all your pine cones laid in. You want to kind of create this mound effect because the body of the turkey is quite large. So we're going to try and create that kind of rounded look. At this point, we can add that back rectangular piece. Now there is still about an inch and a half between the back of the pine cones and where you're adding that back piece because we're going to slide the feathers in between these and that will add is a little bit more reinforcement. So we just glue it, the bottom part, along the back 
I just hold it there until you know that it's on securely. And then we're going to grab our feather plume and we're going to put glue along the back so that it will attach to that back stop and along the bottom so it'll attach to the base. So you're kind of connecting both sides, the back and the bottom. And then make sure that you secure that tightly as well. And what we're going to do later on is fill in some of the space where the feather plume is with a few more pine cones so that it kind of fills in that back area a little bit. And as you can see, I'm snugging them down kind of tightly and a little bit lower than our big mound because we will be adding a few more elements to our plume at the back. And this just helps to fill it in a little bit. And now we're ready to move on to create the head. You'll need some felt and some foil. If you don't have any felt, you could use red crepe paper, but I like the felt because it really kind of adds a nice texture. So grab your foil and you're going to just mold the neck part. And I was actually quite surprised at how easy this was to do. I basically did it on my first try and I've never done it before. So give yourself a little bit of uh, leeway because all you're gonna do is create that little head piece, the neck and a base. So I just grabbed a whole bunch together. I kind of just formed, this is why the foil is so great. I just kind of formed the base and then squeezed a chunk together for the neck and then the head. Next, we're gonna wrap the foil head in the felt. So cut a generous piece, quite a bit larger than the foil neck that you've created. And if you have to add a little bit more bulk to it, as you can see that I was doing here, once I saw what kind of size I had, I wanted something a little bit larger for the base so that I could fold it over the pine cones. So you can just play around with it a little bit. And then I wanted to make sure that the felt would come over top. So as you can see, I've placed it back enough so that the felt will come right over. And as you're working the felt onto the foil, you can cut away the excess felt. So again, just make sure that you have enough felt to cover everything over. And then you can cut away a little bit as you're going along, a little bit of the excess. And I'm creating more of a long, extension at the front to cover that neck and head part. Now we're ready to start the process of gluing. So when you're gluing it on, I just do a very little bit at a time, like almost just a half an inch piece. So I will lay some glue down, add the felt to that, and then continue to put a little bit more glue and add a little bit more felt. This way you don't have a big mess of felt everywhere. You're kind of able to glue a little on and also cut off some excess as you need it. So I start with the base and the front of the neck and I start to fill around the head with the glue and also just pull up the felt just a little bit at a time. So apply some glue, push up the felt, make sure that it's adhered really well because you don't want big pieces hanging off. And again, once you're at a stage where you're covering the head, you might want to clip a little bit of that felt. So that gives you a little bit of ability to wrap it around the neck. And as long as you're taking it bit by bit easily, it's going to add a really nice effect because what the felt does when it sits on top of the foil is it makes it kind of look like that uneven skin that the turkey neck has. So make sure you glue the base down as well to the bottom of the felt and just keep wrapping that felt around the neck. Doesn't matter if there's wrinkled bits as long as it's adhering right to the foil. So again, just cut and clip and keep continuing until you finish the entire neck. And especially around the head area is where I found that I could clip off a lot of the excess felt so that it really kind of had a smoother look to the actual neck part. And even though I'm going to speed this up, just take your time, just do a little bit at a time, piece by piece, clip as you need, and then wrap and make sure that it stays adhered to it with the glue. And now that we're almost finished with the neck part, we're going to take that beautiful neck and we're going to take it back to the base of our turkey. And 
I don't actually attach it on right away. I look to see what it looks like on top of the base and then you see how I've added a few more pine cones at the back that I am just dry fitted to see what they'd look like. Now I'm going to attach them and I did it so that the neck looked in proportion to the amount of body. So however many additional pine cones you have to add and it doesn't matter that there's that space uh, underneath the neck because once you attach the head to the pine cones with the glue, you're not gonna see that space. Okay, now let's talk about feathers. I found these dried tiger lily leaves and they're just basically, again, on the side of the road. Tiger lilies grow everywhere. And at the end of the summer, you have these brown leaves that are just kind of hanging on the ground. You can just pull them right out of the ground and clip them on site. And then all I've done is wrap them and put a little twist tie at the end of them because once we lay those side wings onto our turkey, I'm going to cover the twist ties with actual leaves that look like feathers as well. So all you're doing here is gluing those two on. I've glued on the head finally because I like the way it's positioned. And now I'm gonna add those beautiful sumac flowers just to give it a little bit more flair at the back. So again, sumac grows everywhere. And at the end of the summer, you've got these lovely red flowers. So I just clipped a couple of those off. I glue the ends and I stick them in between the back of the pine cones and where the cedar is. So it just gives it that nice pop of color and they stay nice and red. So however long you want this decorative turkey on display, you'll have that bright red color from the sumac flowers. And once you're done that, then we can move on to the face of our turkey. So all I did was look for some pebbles and I actually found a stone that looked like a beak. So that's what I used, but you can use anything for the beak. You can use yellow paper or anything that you have that kind of beak shape. But as you can see, I found this great pebble when I was walking the beach. So all I did was put a little glue on and attached it the same thing with the black pebbles for the eyes. I just put a little bit of glue on and you wanna put them back a little bit farther at the side of the head because turkey's eyes are a little bit set back. So you don't want something at the front or a little bit uh, offset. And the last thing we're gonna do is add the feathers. So these are sumac flowers. Again, in late, August, early September, they start to turn this brilliant red color. So while you've gone and picked out your sumac flowers, make sure you grab a few of the leaves. And I just pressed them, so I took them off of their uh, branches and I pressed them down between two pieces of paper towel. Just set them there for about a couple of hours and then that way when I went to glue them on, they were nice and flat. So as you can see, I kind of dry fit them to see if they would look good over top of those um, lily leaves. And now I've got them just attaching them with glue. And there you go. Your decorative Thanksgiving turkey will be the talk of the town. So if you enjoyed the video, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell because the next natural craft and recipes video will come straight to you. And check out this all natural fall leaf wreath. It is super easy. Again, just a walk in the woods to collect some amazing leaves and you will have an unbelievable fall wreath.